In this week's Technique Tuesday video, I'll demonstrate a refined cable cast on. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. The cable cast on creates a great looking edge, but the first and last cast on stitches do not look like the others. So today I'm going to show you some tricks to refine the cable cast on so that the edge has a more consistent look from start to finish. Let's get started. The cable cast on produces a really attractive edge. The problem with it is that the very beginning of the cast on and the very end of the cast on are not worked like the rest of the cast on. So what you get is um, a starting stitch that looks a bit different here at the edges than the rest of these look. And you get an ending stitch that looks a little bit different too. You can see how these have these kind of rope looking, diagonal looking things. And here you'll, you'll see two strands coming across and the corner curves around. In addition, this edge column is a row shorter, has fewer rows in it than this second stitch. Here is a swatch that was done using some tricks that I'm going to show you today. And you can see that the starting stitch looks just like all of the other stitches. And the ending stitch, the ending column of stitches, uh, looks much more similar to the other stitches. And in addition, it's a little hard to count right here, but we have the same number of rows in this first column of stitches as we have in the second column. So what we're going to do is we're going to cast on for the cable cast on like we would for any cable cast on, but we're going to cast on three extra stitches. So with the cable cast on, you start with a slip knot. and you put the slip knot on the needle. So that is your first cast on stitch. Your second cast on stitch is, is, uses the knitting on technique. So you insert your needle through that slip knot and you wrap or pick the yarn, whichever hand you hold the yarn in doesn't matter. Wrap it just like for a knit stitch and you pull the loop through. Now you have this new loop on the needle and you need to put it on the left hand needle. You can either do it tip to tip like this. I instead take my left needle, I cross in front of the loop and bring it in from right to left. Either way is fine, but that's how I do it. So now that you have two stitches on the needle, now you can actually do the cable cast on. You insert between the two stitches. You're not in, in the stitch, you're between the two stitches. And then you're going to wrap the yarn or pick it. If you hold the yarn in your left hand, you're going to wrap it around just like for a knit stitch, pull it through. And again, the way I do it is I bring this left hand needle in front of that loop and bring it through from right to left. Then as then I need to pull the working needle out. I do not tighten this loop up yet. I insert it between the two stitches and then I tighten that loop. Pull it through, let the left needle cross in front. Then as I pull my working needle out, I reinsert it between the two stitches and then I tighten it up. I'll show you in the left hand. You grab the yarn just like for knitting a stitch, pull it through to the front. You can let this loop be as big as it needs to be Bring the left needle in front through there and then I pull out and immediately back in. Then I tighten the yarn. So if you tighten the yarn after you've inserted the needle, it maintains an elastic edge. It doesn't create an edge that's too tight and you don't have to struggle to insert the needle. So if I tighten up first, and then I try to insert it, then I have to try to make sure I'm between the two stitches and it can be a bit of a struggle. So I can again make this loop as big as I need to make it, insert it in, bring my 
uh, working needle between the two stitches, then tighten up and then I can keep going. So I want to create on the needle, I want to cast on three stitches more than whatever my pattern says. So if it says to cast on 15 stitches, I want to cast on 18. If it says 20, I want 23. Oh. So what we have here, we have a slip knot, then we did knitting on to create the second one, and then all of these we use the cable cast on technique of inserting the working needle between two existing stitches in order to knit a new stitch and place it on the needle. So these all have that nice rope looking appearance to them, but then we have this last stitch on the needle, this last loop that we created, and it doesn't look like the others. It doesn't have that completed rope look because there's nothing between these two stitches to hold this rope down like that. What we're going to do, we've cast on three extra stitches. If you're working with a double pointed needle or a circular needle, you can immediately slide these all the way to the other end. And you can let these two stitches right here, these are the two extra beginning stitches that we don't need. We can pull that off and then we can pull the tail and it releases that. So now we're back down to just having one extra stitch, um, one stitch more than we needed to cast on. And what we will do to eliminate this last stitch that's a little bit wonkier, not quite the same, is we're going to decrease it together with the second stitch. So whatever your pattern says is the first stitch of the first row, if it's a knit, then we're going to do a knit two together. If it says it's a purl, then you're going to do a purl two together. And that will place the second stitch on top of this other one. It's going to hide this one behind. So what I'll do is I'll insert the working needle through both of those stitches, wrap, and then pull the loop through. So then I have worked those two stitches together and it creates a little bit of a neater corner and I will have exact, however many rows I work in this stitch is how many rows I will have below the needle. When using the cable cast on to create fabric that will be seamed, those starting and ending cast on stitches aren't going to show, so the refined cable cast on may not be needed. But if those edges are going to remain exposed after the project is complete, such as for a blanket or scarf, you may find that this technique produces a nicer looking finished result. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below or join the discussion in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week.